This week on the Great Debaters Contest Golden Series, we feature innovation and technology. Surrounded by the cityscape of Nairobi region, I am Austin Yombok. This is the Great Debaters Contest. And I am Mariam Bishar. Welcome to the show. We have Our Lady of Mercy going versus Olympic High School, and their motion is on whether poor infrastructure is a barrier to adopting digital payment systems. We'll would let them take the stage now. Proposal number one, you have three minutes. Last Sunday, I went to church. Since I was 30 minutes late, I decided to take a matatu. If you were in that matatu, you would have regretted going with that matatu. Why? The matatu was horrible. All the windows were cracked. There were no seat belts. All the seats were torn. And the driver was driving ruthlessly. So how, was, how sure was I that this matatu was going to reach me at my destination? I wasn't sure. So what did I do? I simply decided to go to, uh, to another matatu so that I could go to church on time. Now, the motion states that poor infrastructure is a barrier to adapting to digital payment system. That poorly maintained car symbolizes poor infrastructure. And my destination, which is the church, symbolizes the use of digital payment systems. Infrastructure is just underlined based on one system. While when we say that something is poor, we simply mean that that something is below a particular standard that it is intended to be. We do, we do have two classifications of infrastructure. We have the hardware infrastructure and the software infrastructure. When I talk about hardware infrastructure, I talk about things that we can see, such as roads, railways, I'm talking about network connectivity, network connectivity, I'm talking about power supply and even water supply. When I'm talking about software in infrastructure, I talk about the rules and regulations that are set by different financial institutions. So back to the motion. How does poor infrastructure interfere with people using digital payment systems? Think of poor network connectivity. Poor infrastructure causes poor network connectivity. How many times have you tried to conduct money transactions with your phone? And you've been told that there are delays, delays and there's no network. How many times? More than once, right? These digital payment systems are, are unreliable. It makes its users unable to conduct money transactions. Think of this example. There was a family, Mr. and Mrs. Moura. Their daughter was kidnapped. After their daughter being kidnapped, the kidnappers asked for one million shillings to send to their Mpesa account. When these, when, these family, when these parents went to the Mpesa account, they found that there was no signal. And therefore, they were unable to send the money to those kidnappers. What happened? Their daughter was killed. Imagine losing a daughter because of a digital payment system. Also think of insecurity. Insecurity really affects the use of digital payment systems. Think of this man. Zungu S. Sounds, who lost 197,000 shillings as a result of fraud. And actually, he, we are not sure if his money was compensated for. So let us improve our infrastructure for people to use the digital payment systems. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes for your opening statements. Well, well, well. From Our Lady of Mercy is Sanya Rispa, strongly opposing the motion that states that poor infrastructure is a barrier to adopting digital payment systems. Now, my beloved audience, let us get to the first point. What is infrastructure? Infrastructure, according to Google, is the basic systems of a nation that are vital to the economy's development and its prosperity. Examples of this infrastructure, electricity, network and power supply. Digital payment systems. This is an app store in making financial transactions in a retail store. For example, you have M-Pesa, M-Shwari, M-Banking, Google Wallet and PayPal. On to my first point. Provision of power. I hear ululations in the rural areas. Why do I hear them? 
My old grandmother is celebrating because our honorable president, Uhuru Kenyatta, has put up a project to make sure that there's efficient power supply in all over the country. Why is that? So as to make sure these digital power systems, payment systems, work efficiently. M-Pesa works every day, but if she's able to use M-Pesa, we are able to send her money for her daily use. And that's why they are very happy about it, because the power systems are going to be all over the country. And this is not a barrier, my dear friends. It is helping us, and it's also helping the economy, my dear friends. On to my second point, high literacy levels. Most of our schools, as I think, have computer labs. We receive computer lessons, and thus we have a technical know-how of how to operate a computer or any other computerized gadget. And this is becoming very efficient in that we are going to have many trained personnel who are going to help these people who do not understand how to operate such gadgets, to operate them efficiently. People in the Safaricom shops are going to be able to explain to you when you're buying this type of phone, what functions that is, does it do? How can you be able to use it? And how can you be able to use the digital payment systems in them? This is going to help our country move forward. We're not supposed to be moving backward. And I'm simply saying, point for structure, yes, it is a barrier. But are you implying that we have to go back to the drawing board, go back and put all our resources and start doing our infrastructure from the word go? so that we have developed infrastructures. Yes, they are there, and we can work with what we have. As per now, M-Pesa is really working. m is really working. You can't tell me that today you can't send M-Pesa from your phone to any other person's phone without implication. Yes, network might be there, but is it usually there all the time? Not all the time, I tell you, my friends. On to my third point. High number of people use it, using digital payment systems in our country. Safaricom has many subscribers, and this is also helping us in using these digital payment systems. My dear opponents, if you want to oppose me in this motion, please think twice. You're stepping on fire, and definitely this fire is going to burn you. Thank you. We'll now hear cross-examinations. Olympic, you have the floor. Derek Were, Olympic High School. Now, the opposers actually say that literacy level is actually one of the factors that is stopping us from adapting digital payment system. Now we are talking of poor infrastructure. What is infrastructure? These are buildings we are talking about. Electricity, they've talked of network connectivity. When you talk of literacy level, are we going to be learning under a tree or in a classroom? Is a classroom not a building? Now my fellow uh, proposer is going to actually expound much on literacy level. Now she talked of the president actually coming with the idea of connecting everywhere throughout the country with power. That is a nice idea, but has that system been achieved to date? It has not been achieved, meaning that poor infrastructure is actually affecting our country in adopting digital payment system. Now, we talked of two types of uh, infrastructure. We talked of the hardware infrastructure, the tangible things, and we are also talking about software infrastructure. What is software infrastructure? You may ask. These are actually laws and regulations set by an institution in order to actually take the activities smoothly. Laws and regulations in a country. When I think of laws and regulations, I think of an M-Pesa. How many people today have an M-Pesa account? How did you register an M-Pesa account? Using your mom's, your dad's identity card. Isn't it, isn't it so? Yes, your mother or your father's identity card. Now, this kind of a system, the laws that uh, uh, the Safaricom has set aside cannot allow the youths who are the majority in our country to actually transact or use this digital payment system. We are not saying that we should do away with uh, actually IDs as a, a mode of actually registering youths, but we are asking, how can the youth, how can those people below the age of 18 adapt, adapt to this kind of digital payment system? Now. I don't know if any one of you heard what our first proposal talked about. Zungu Z sounds lost 197,000 Kenya shillings. Do you know the reason? Malfunction of the network. Malfunction of the network. Poor infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, if truly poor infrastructure is not the cause of digital payment system, do you think Zungu Z sounds could have lost his 197,000 Kenya shillings? Ladies and gentlemen, I dream of a world where everyone, both the, both the poor and the rich, will be able to use a system that will secure their money. We dream of a country whereby everyone can be able to use a system whereby they can be able to transact their fee in case of needs. When I think of poor infrastructure, I think of the day when this infrastructure will enable everyone to withdraw their money when they really want. When you have a sick 
brother in hospital and you go to that beautiful agent and tells you, sorry, sir, I do not have enough money in my LOM wallet. What does that mean? You cannot withdraw money. You cannot save that brother of yours. This poor infrastructure is actually hurting us. Ladies and gentlemen, poor infrastructure is the cause for not adopting into digital payment system. I rest my case. Opposition, you have three minutes to make your rebuttal. What the opponents indeed. You have said nothing, nothing but words of wisdom. Need I say, I am much wiser than you are. And that is why I tend to disagree. You talked about M-Pesa accounts. I believe whether you use your mom's phone or your own phone, you still transact money. And the most important point here is that you will still use that M-Pesa to transact money. Or is it that so? I think it's that way. Next point, you talk about someone using M-Pesa to send one million shillings. As far as I'm concerned, I think that there is a limitation on to which you can use M-Pesa to send money. Think about this. You have an M-Pesa account. Or would you rather walk around with money everywhere? Which is much secure, that account or working with money on you? Think about that. Next thing. Oh, my opponent said something about poor network connectivity. If I must tell you, there is something called network boosters. They boost network where there is no network. Maybe you haven't seen them. I don't know. Okay, I'll talk about poor infrastructure as a barrier to adopting digital payment systems. My colleagues and I are not disagreeing to the fact that poor infrastructure are not disagreeing that poor infrastructure is a barrier. What you're simply trying to say is that there are other barriers which hinder these digital payment systems. And if we don't look at these other factors and we dwell on poor infrastructure, we are definitely on the wrong path. Let's think about this. With all these years that you're, you're trying to tell us that poor infrastructure is not working, all these transactions are still working, or aren't they? They are. So if you're trying to tell us that poor infrastructure is a barrier, I think PayPal won't be working, MSOCO won't be working, Google Wallet won't be working. But since poor infrastructure is not a barrier, they are definitely working. Something about literacy. There is this thing called ICT, and we are all aware of it. Most of you say that most people don't know how to use computers. We don't disagree with that. Of course, most people don't know. But there's something called learning. Are you interested in learning? If not, what do you want people to do? No one can force you to go and learn computer studies. But if you have the interest, you will definitely learn how to use computers. And you will know what to do while transacting money. Why I say that poor infrastructure is not a barrier. Another point. We are all aware of the human resource personnel. These people are put in the MPSA, in the where the MPSAs are. They help us in knowing how to transact money, how to put money, and how to do all the other things. If we would go to those people and, and talk to them, and they'll give us the explanation, would we still be here complaining about infrastructure as a barrier? I don't think so. I, if you dare oppose me, think twice. Oh, by the way, game on. The audience has posed questions to the two teams. The proposition have been asked if they say that mobile money transfers and digital payments are not a good idea, what alternatives are they offering? And uh, the opposition have been challenged if they are not supporting the proposers by saying that network coverage may not always be there. Proposal number three, you have three minutes. You asked a question and you stated like we are against Mpesa against using the MPS in terms of transacted money. Well, let me clarify, clarify to you on what Derek Query said. He talked, he talked about the laws and regulations of MPESA. He talked about the laws and regulations of mobile services pro providers. He said for you to have 
a Safaricom line, you need to have an identity card. Now, if you are below the age of 18, you have to use your parents' identity card. You're in school. You're not using your own line. You're using your teacher's line. How comes you are saying that we are opposing this? The reason as to why we are saying that poor infrastructure is a barrier to the adoption of digital payment system is literacy levels. Now, Judge Booker, imagine yourself walking along the streets and then you get, you meet, you get to meet this lady and says, excuse me, madam, please help me out. I cannot withdraw my cash. Well, you obviously would like to ask, why can't you? Well, simply because I don't know the steps and procedures of withdrawing my cash. The literacy here that we're talking about is digital literacy, ladies and gentlemen. You might take people being literate in terms of education, but think it in terms of digitally literate. How many of the literate people are able to operate these systems? Now, listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. 28.06% of Mali's population is literate. 27.74% of South Sudanese people are illiterate. Now, flip the coin and listen very keenly. On the other side, 71.94% in Mali are illiterate. 72.76% in South Sudan are illiterate. Now, you want to say, like, if they are illiterate in terms of education, will they be able to be literate in terms of digital platforms, in terms of operating these systems? That's why we say literacy is a barrier to the adoption of digital payment system. Now, secondly, let's talk about cost, if that's not enough for you. Let's talk about cost. Now, as the Kenyan citizens, you obviously want to have that flexible transport system in Nairobi, in whatever place that you want to go. And for that, since we want to have digital adoption, the digital payment system, we would be having the cashless fare system, where you pay using a card. Examples of these cards is the Beba Pay, we have Pepea, and we have my 1963 card. Now, take an instance, you use three routes when you're going to job or either you're going home. Now, one route use Beba Pay, another one use Pepea, another one using the My1963 card. Look at the cost that is gonna bring about, that is gonna be brought about to the citizen, to the normal Mwananchi, ladies and gentlemen. You need to have three cards for you to move flexibly around. Ladies and gentlemen, with this poor infrastructure, we have it as a barrier to the adoption of digital payment system. Francis Omolo, I rest my case. Our Lady of Mercy, you have three minutes to respond to the audience. From Our Lady of Mercy, Grace Wairimo, strongly opposing the motion, I will start by answering the question. My colleague here did not say that we have network boosters just because we don't have network. We have network boosters to help us when the network is not efficient. On to my first point. There is easy purchase of goods and services. When you tell me that we have poor infrastructure, then how is it possible that I can sit comfortably in my house and access OLX and buy something I want? Are you trying to tell me that it is more efficient to go somewhere? I want, I want a laundry machine. Are you trying to tell me that it is more efficient to go to town looking around for a washing machine rather than sitting back, relaxing, taking my phone, going to the OLX page, looking for a washing machine and buying it from there? You said that there is illiteracy in Mali and Sudan. Did you ask yourself the reason as to why there is, there is illiteracy in those countries? Then I'll tell you, it is because of political instability. Both the countries have political instability. It is not that the people don't want how to learn how to use this digital payment system. It is just that you can't go to a class to be taught when there is war going on on the other side. On to my second point. Many of our businesses have tilling systems. 
e.g. Kenya Power. Nowadays, I can be able to pay my bills for the Kenya Power when I'm at home. Rather than the old days when I used to go to their offices, queue up a very long queue just to pay my bills. If I don't pay in time, I have to pay 550 shillings on top of my bills. We should be realistic. We are not saying that we should not, ad we, are not say we are not saying that there is no poor infrastructure. We are only stating that though there is, the one we have is already working for us. And therefore, we should not turn back. We should not look back and not take up these digital payment systems. They are assisting us in so many ways. Therefore, join me to oppose this motion. Thank you. We'll now hear a final statement. So, Olympic, you have a minute. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, OLX is helping us to be able to meet the buyer and the seller. OLX is not a digital payment platform. It only connects the buyer and the seller. But they went ahead and told us that OLX actually helped us to actually perform the digital payment system. I wonder how. We talked of the literacy level in Africa, and we talked of Mali, and we talked of Southern Sudan. And we have shown you how this system cannot be adapted if we do not improve the infrastructure in our continent. They talked of power supply. Let me tell you something. 600 million people in Sub-Saharan Africa, this is more than two-thirds of the population, are not connected to power supply. This is according to Rural Electric Power Evaluation of Household Electricity. It was conducted in 2015. Ladies and gentlemen, when uh, Michelle was here, she talked about fraud. She talked about insecurity. She talked about the unreliability of networks, where you have to wait because of the malfunction of the servers. Ladies and gentlemen, when uh, Francis was here, he talked about the cost. Ladies and gentlemen, think of a situation where you need to have three cards. Beba, Beba Pay, you need to have my 1963 card so that you can be able to use different routes. Ladies and gentlemen, Listen to my words rather than choose gold, for wisdom is better than jewels. We rest our case. Our Lady of Mercy, you also have a minute. My beloved audience, they're talking about power supply. Let me tell you one thing. It's so funny that they are giving us such reactions. Well, I have a practical example. In Kenya, exactly, in Kibra, what do they do? They go to the transformers and get oil from there, which they use in making fries, Bajias and samosas. If you weren't doing that, I think we'd be having enough power supply. Or would, wouldn't we? Poor, I'm sorry. Insecurity. I guess you're talking about hacking. Well, a recent research by the OPA study just showed us that right now, when you have hacking problems, there is something called the one-type encryption code, which is used to curb hackers. That I've said. Unusual cases of nature, change is inevitable, my dear. And no one and whether you accept it or not, change is the only permanent thing. The same way digital migration happened is the same way that we'll have to adopt to these digital payment systems. Let it be known, my dear audience, that we, as we stand here, say that poor infrastructure is not a barrier simply because our systems are working and they are working efficiently. If they would have given us reasons or they would have given us a percentage of where these systems are not working, then maybe we would have understood them. Now let me tell you one thing. Join us in saying yes, in saying no to this motion. Thank you. Michelle, the example you brought up of delays was, a, was an excellent one, talking of why you know, the infrastructure is a barrier to adopting digital systems. Derek, good mastery of language. You stand out in your team and that tells us that you're a very uh, uh, seasoned debater, very passionate and good mastery of topic as well. Francis, good speaker as well. I know you're, you know, you're mellow in a way, but you bring it out. But I, I don't want you to do it yourself and lose the audience, all right? You must have a touch with the audience as well. And so I think to the two teams, we can still do better with more practice. All the best. A Lady of Mercy, you know, your team goes on to talk about other issues that then would be the challenge towards adopting digital payment systems. You talk about uh, literacy levels being very, very low, people not adopting technology as fast as they should. You talk about um, 
uh, you know, education and training, and those then being the challenges towards adopting digital payment systems. But um, as you look at digital payment systems, it's much more than just mobile banking. There's also internet banking, and you should have alluded to that um, as, as well. Our Lady of Mercy, the judges gave you 68%. Please give them a hand. And with a one-point difference between Our Lady of Mercy and Olympic High School, <clears throat> Olympic takes the day with 69%. Congratulations to the two teams on stage. We would like, uh, we would like to thank our viewers and also our audience, urging all of you to follow us on our social media platforms at Great Debaters EA Twitter. I'm Austin Nyumbok. And I'm Mariam Bashar. We'll see you next time. <laughs>